months ago, we launched this vacation rental. Has it been worth it? Have I learned anything? Do I have any regrets? I'm sharing it all with you today. Hey there, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. Let's get started. I feel like I've left you high and dry wondering what happened to the little lake house. Last year, Sean and I took you on the journey of renovating this cabin from a disgusting, before mouse infested, water damaged cabin to what I think is an adorable after. I'm so proud of what we did in this space. It was definitely a lot more work than we anticipated since we had to completely rip this whole thing down to the studs because of all the issues that I had, re it, and build it up from there. In August 2021, we were finally done our renovations. It took us nine months. If you're curious to see what we did in this space, I will leave a link to see the playlist of all of the Little Lake House videos where you can see the beginning, you can see the kitchen reno, bathroom, the bedrooms, living room, etc. Sean and I did everything ourselves except for the spray foam insulation, which we got contracted out. So in August of 2021, we launched this as a short-term vacation rental. Originally, we weren't sure if we were going to do a long-term or a short-term, but once we were done, the vibe of this place is just so peaceful. The view is just amazing. We knew we had to share it with as many people as possible. How is it going? I can't express how grateful we are for everybody that has rented this place. I was hesitant to open it up at the end of August because I thought we had missed that golden opportunity to have people here in the summer. But to our delight and our surprise, people rented it through the fall, through the winter, through our minus 45 degrees Celsius winters. Um, and just enjoyed the coziness of this space. I just opened up bookings for summer 2022 and the summer is basically full. We're just so grateful for that. This is something that I was concerned about. I didn't know if this was the right choice to have a little bit more of an inconsistent rental situation. But so far the cabin has been full of families from everywhere, from our nearest city, which is Edmonton, to Calgary, to Kamloops, to Grand Prairie, from all over the province. And it's been unexpectedly so satisfying to be able to meet all these people virtually and to offer them this little piece of comfort you know, for their birthday, for their anniversary and all that kind of thing. As far as lessons we've learned so far, we have been renting this out for six months as a short-term rental and oh man, I have learned a lot. I've learned a lot. So I'll share some of those things with you today, but I do have a blog post all about that. I will link it down in the description box below or just visit the DIYMommy.com. In that blog post, I'm sharing 10 things that I learned. So if you're considering getting into a vacation rental situation or you're just curious, definitely read that whole blog post where I pour out my heart. The biggest thing that I learned initially is we needed to be prepared for a large investment initially for the vacation rental property. So not only did we have this renovation that took a lot more time and money than we anticipated, which isn't great, but I mean, we wanted to make sure that everything was done properly and everything looked good at the end. We also had to spend a lot of money and all the accessories and all of the things to put in the house to make it fully furnished and to have all of the amenities that a guest is gonna to wanna to look for. And that really took me by surprise. I had thought of it, like I knew we had to do the beds, the couch, the appliances and all that, but I didn't really think about the costs of the things like the coffee maker, the coffee pods, um, dishwasher detergent, toilet paper, Kleenex, uh, all of the towels, soaps, shampoos, we're offering pets to stay here so we have, you know, a doggy bed, dog towels, dog treats, and then I like to do a gift basket for the guests for, you know, just a little welcome basket with a few snacks in it and a drink. So all of the little things that I think are really important to give our guests that experience that I really hope that they enjoy add up. And that was something that I hadn't really thought through fully at the beginning of this journey. Another thing I learned is that the durability of all the finishes in here are paramount, so, so important. So there's some things that I've been really happy with. I love 
the luxury vinyl plank that we put down. That's been fantastic for all of the guests that have come in and out. I love this sectional back here. It has really durable fabric. It's easy to clean. And I also love the solid wood beds that we have in here, the solid wood table from Ikea. All of that has been really good. Regrets? I wish we would have put the luxury vinyl plank into the bathroom as well. The tile is gorgeous, but that real marble is hard to clean and it's gonna be scratched up. We kind of did the rooms in an order that didn't make sense to put all the whole flooring in, but looking back, I wish we would have rearranged the renovation to get that flooring in there. I'm also regretting putting a white sink in the kitchen. Looks beautiful, I have a white sink at home, but we definitely have to clean it with special cleaners just to get stains out and all of that, and I can see how that's gonna be looking pretty rough soon. I have a couple fabulous cleaners that I work with, and they've done a really great job with it, but I think if I was to go back, I probably just would have put a stainless steel sink in here. So far, we're really loving the layout of this place. I'm glad we kept it the same. I'm glad we kept it really nice and open. I'm glad we didn't try to attempt to squeeze in a third bedroom here with the only the one bathroom. Another huge thing that I learned, and again, I didn't really think of the gravity of this, is how important cleaning would be in this rental. So of course, right now, everybody wants a perfectly clean, well, everybody wants it all the time, but especially right now, everybody wants a perfectly clean place to be. Plus we have to sanitize all of those high touch items. I'm glad I didn't overload it with decor. I even took away some of the decor thinking that um, the more little doodads and items and linens and etc. that we have in here, the more that we have to clean and sanitize. And it just takes up the cleaner's time, it takes up my time, and it costs money when you get down to it. So cleanability is really important and I, I'm very, very grateful that I have someone that I can trust that cleans the cabin, that does a really, really good job of it. And then I also have, I also found a second cleaner for when my first cleaner is sick, which has happened and that's been good. So if you're considering doing a short-term rental, thinking of that beforehand is extremely important. Make sure that you take into account how much money it is going to be to pay for a cleaner or how much time it's gonna to be to clean the whole thing yourself and then choose those finishes to reflect that. We've also learned how important communication is with the guests. I put together a guidebook with like a binder full of things about the house, how to use the appliances, where you can eat around here, what you can do. That's been great, people have loved that. We have signs all over the house, making sure people know how to use each of the appliances, lock the door, check out tasks, that sort of thing. Definitely recommend tons of signage, a nice welcome book, but ultimately what seems to be important is that we can answer guests' questions as soon as they have them. So we, we're listed now on both Verbo and Airbnb. When a guest messages us, I try to get back to them as soon as possible, especially if they're in the house right now and they have a question, they have an issue, getting back to them is so important. We have had a couple issues here, so we've forgotten a couple things. We forgot a corkscrew, pizza cutter, ice cream scoop. What else have we forgot? We didn't have the right dog supplies at the beginning, didn't have extra linens. Now I have extra linens, extra towels, all of those little things. As guests have had these issues, it reminds me that we need to add all these things. We have had one big issue too, where it was minus 45 degrees in the winter here and the water froze. So the guest had no water. So thankfully we don't live too far away from the cabin. So Sean and I were out here at like 11 p.m. trying to warm things up, getting some more water into the place. So we definitely learned that it was a good choice to have our rental property so close to home and to be ready to take care of any emergencies in person. Has anyone trashed the place? That was my biggest hesitation as we launched this place as a short-term rental. We spent so much time, so much blood, literal blood, sweat, and tears on this renovation. I was so concerned that we would have someone come in and, and disrespect the place. Um, however, I am so thankful that every single guest we've had, and we've had dozens of guests, um, has been extremely respectful of the cabin. They've been so tidy, so fantastic to communicate, and it's really been a great experience so far. I'm a pessimist by nature, so I'm always like ready to open the door when I do the checkout and, and see something trashed. So I know that's a possibility. That just confirmed that we shouldn't put anything too precious in the house. Everything, you know, is 
relatively inexpensive IKEA stuff, thrift store stuff. So if things do get wrecked, we had a couple glasses broken, a mug, that stuff happens. Stains on the bed, etc. We can just replace it. So if you're considering doing a short-term rental, definitely putting things in that you're not super duper attached to, but that's still create that amazing experience is, is really important. Has this been worth it? Has this been worth it? I would say yes. I would say yes. As far as the money that we put into the place, we did put more money into the renovation than we wanted to. Just buying this place was a huge risk for Sean and myself. So we haven't made our money back yet. And we knew that. We knew it was gonna take a long time. But since the bookings have been pretty full, we think we can see that eventually. But what has been far greater than that satisfaction is just learning how to be a host and just enjoying that experience. I didn't think that I would. I'm a hardcore introvert, but conversing with all of these different people from around the province, just being that little part of their lives, whether it's a birthday, anniversary, we had a couple celebrating their 32nd anniversary here, I think has been such an honor and a privilege. And yeah, I feel so grateful. I, I remember crying in the middle of the renovation and, and wondering if we had made the right choice. And I feel like so far, this has been a fantastic experience. Those are the things that I've learned. Those are some changes we've made. That's a look at how the cabin looks now. And if you have any more questions about the little lake house, let me know down in those comments below. I would love to talk to you. If you're curious about it, I have a site for it, littlelakehouse.ca. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed this recap and this check-in on the cabin project. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. I'm gonna leave some more videos that I hope you will enjoy watching next, right up here.